So welcome back to this uh, week 3 lectures, Professional Scientific Communication course. So in the previous lectures, we have looked into the importance of title, importance of keywords um, in, in attracting readership for your uh, article. Now we are going to look into the structure of your research article and how you go about basically writing the research article because the research article which the introduction, methods, results, observations or discussions is what going to sort of help you to arrive at the abstract and title. So, we are going to look into how we are going to do. The slide what is shown here I give some recap of the point that we discussed earlier which talks about you know the structure of the manuscript. You have a title, we have abstract, introduction, methods, results and discussion. What is shown on the left side is the abstract which also has got most of the elements. Now, what we have discussed so far is about title and abstract, right. We have looked into as to how do you write an abstract, some of the important um, guidelines in writing abstract and then we have spent a lot of time in title and also we have spent time with keywords because the abstract title followed by abstract help the reader to understand what you have done and keyword is important because that is what bring the reader to your article therefore we spend time on this. Now we are going to look into the rest of your you know the manuscript which constitute the bulk and which constitute the original discoveries and we are going to talk about how you write that particular section that is introduction, methods, results and discussion. So often you know we talk about you know title and abstract you said that although it forms the the first as I showed you in the first you read title and then abstract and then go to the rest of the uh, elements of your manuscript. When you write often you start with methods, you do not start with title. As I emphasize title is something that you, you arrive at at the end of writing the rest of the manuscript. Before that you do abstract that is again after writing the rest of the contents of your manuscript you write abstract because it is a summary of executive summary of everything that you have done. So, what do you normally start with? Normally people start with methods and then go and write what is called a result. The number that is shown on the left side or the sequence most often people use and then they go and write introduction because it is based on the results that you sort of guide the you know readers to highlight or to understand what you have done and why it is important and finally you discuss your observations, then you write abstract, then you write title. Therefore, we are going to revisit and look at how do you do each one of these sections. We have seen that even for title there are papers that how effective the title should be and what are the important elements in title that helps. And what I am going to connect you with is an important paper, very useful paper written by uh, Elona, you can go and read that paper here that is shown here link and uh, this is a full text available published in Yale Journal of Biological Medicine and, and this paper is about how to write your first research paper. This is for all of you who are just into the research, who wish to write a very good research paper and you should go and read. It is very, very informative and an important paper really written in a very lucid way. Um, which, which you know really sort of highlights as to what kind of um, barriers you go through when you start writing. So, it is an intimidating process you know whether you are writing a research article or you are presenting your work to a larger gathering it is both are intimidating when you come to a stage where you find 200 people sitting and looking at you it is intimidating exactly the same way when you write want to write a this article is intimidating because you do not know where to start, how to start, what to say first. It becomes extremely difficult when you are a beginner, right. One of the stumbling blocks is the beginning of the process of creating the first draft, you know, you, because it is not that in one go you write manuscript. At least there are 10, 15 times you have to revise, edit, improve your manuscript. So, there are several strategies, you know, guidelines have been suggested, strategies have been told. It is not just one way to do it, there are multiple ways. We are going to list some of them 
you know, which would help you, you know, to write research article in basic science field, right? So that's something that I really want you to go and read that is given in the paper. This is an, in a very interesting anecdote, right, given by um, a physician who says it is easier to embalm the dead than to write an article about it. You know, it talks about a procedure to fix a dead body, you know, and you can learn it and you can do it. But if somebody asks you to write it, it's, it, it's much more difficult than doing it, right? So there are not many things in the world wherein it is easier done than said, right? Research article is one. So you are done your research, you are almost completed and you found it's very easy. I could do research experiments and you could document all the results, you have the data with you. When your supervisor asks you to okay, write a thesis, then it becomes difficult. Then you find it, my goodness, this research, carrying out research experiments is easier than writing what you have done, right? It becomes difficult. There are not many such examples, some are like this. That's what I said, research is easier done than said. For example, you know, if somebody asks you to identify colors, right? Two different colors, yeah, darker green and lighter green and say that, you know, tell me the difference between that. You know what's the difference, but saying that in words sometimes is difficult. You know, that's, that's something that is like that when you want to write a research article. So this paper, which I want you to read, is that this paper discusses seven rules that allow the writer to prepare well, a well-structured and comprehensive manuscript for a publication submission. So this is, you know, we are going to basically follow this particular, you know, paper for the seven, uh, what is that, uh, seven rules, one after the other and give some examples and see how that could help you in writing a better manuscript, okay? As I told, this is not the only way you write. This is one of the ways, right? There, there could be many other ways. There are many links that I am going to uh, share with you, so you, you may want to go and explore some of them. The first one is create regular time blocks for writing as appointments in your calendar and keep these appointments. This may sound very trivial. What is this? You are talking about research article and it says that create regular time blocks because it is very important. This is important because you need to be prepared as to how much time it will take for you to complete the writing, how much time it will take for your supervisor to complete the revision because you may have thought that you have written the best manuscript, the best possible way that you could, but you are a beginner. But if it goes to your supervisor who is much more experienced than you, you will find it that it is not at all in a stage that can be even, you know, shown to somebody else. So you would, you know, work on it and when it comes back, you may feel that, my goodness, this is not something I wrote. It looks very different than what I wrote. But that is how the process begins. Then you learn as to how you have written and how it has been changed, what kind of a transformation, you know, it had happened. Often, you know, when I was a PhD student, whenever there is a visitor to my, our lab, my supervisor used to say that, okay, Ganesh, why don't you tell what exactly you have done? Then I will explain something that I have done. And the visitor would, you know, look at it a blank face. Then I would understand he did not understand anything. I would be wondering, probably he does not really understand. He is not from this field. Then my supervisor will talk, start telling what I have done. And then he will appreciate that I have done a good work. Then I will realize that although the work was mine, the idea was mine, I did the work, I know the details better than my supervisor, but my supervisor is able to tell better than I could, right? Because that comes with time. So that is not easy. That's what we are talking about, right? So therefore, you know, it you know, since you know you thought that you have written a good paper, it doesn't mean that your supervisor will read it, one goes say, let us submit, because that would straight away would be rejected because it does not convey what you are done and it is not the best possible way one could write. Therefore, you should know that, you know, if I have taken three months to write my thesis or my paper, my supervisor requires at least three weeks to edit that. So, if I know when we are planning to submit a manuscript, right, then I should have planned, you know, I should have planned that, okay, in the month of March, we are planning to submit my manuscript. In April, I am going to leave this lab. 
Therefore, you know, I should start preparing from now onwards. I know that I have to give the complete version, the best possible version that I could make three months from now. And then my supervisor got at least one month to finalize and submit and the next month I can go. So I know when I'm going, therefore now I should know when I should be submitted, how much time my supervisor requires and how much time I require. This is called as planning. So when you plan, it is not that this is not that I am saying, this I am exactly quoting from that paper, most of us follow that, but I am saying the paper because most often somebody tells you who is sitting next across to you, you will say this guy has no business, he will say all these things. When you read such research articles where people say that this is how you should do, then you realize this is how the professional world works. Okay? So you have to have the timeline fixed. And second, it is not like I have done my experiment, now I start writing, it does not. Most often it goes hand in hand. In fact, we, you may carry out a few last experiments, but that time you start writing. And writing, you cannot write whole day. You may need a you know, good solid three hours, four hours a day. It's good enough for you to write you know, for that particular day. Likewise, if you work for 20 days, you would complete your thesis or paper, whatever it is. So you need three hours. So you need to identify, okay, I'm going to sit in the morning, spend three hours, work on it, I'll stop. Then I'll go and do my rest of the experiments and come back, analyze results and read my writing and then improve and so on. So it's very, very important that you have a calendar and keep appointments as to what is your deadline, what, you know, the roadmap as to the results I would finish by this day, methods I will finish by day, discussion I will finish by that day and then I'll give the final manuscript to my supervisor and then you might take one month. Then we'll submit, then I'll leave the lab. Because you leave the lab without publication, then it's going to hurt you because you know publication is an important uh, uh, you know kind of a certificate for the work that you have done. So it's you have to keep that in mind, and you have to plan. You have to plan well ahead. Six months, one year ahead, you have to plan all this. This is very important, right? The second rule. This is called a rule by this particular author. The second rule is create a detailed outline and discuss it with your mentor and peers. Mentor meaning your supervisor, peers, people who also work in this area, who have some experience, go and discuss. What is outline? We will come back a little later. It is basically even before you start writing, you have to put bullets. You have to say these are the observations that you have. These are my questions. Then I am going to put them all, rearrange and see I missed something and then you know insert, delete whatever it is. You say that these are the experiments, these are the results I am going to put together to make this particular manuscript. So you need multiple discussions for this. You have to put the bullets, make an outline, discuss with your supervisor, discuss with your friends, peers and then arrive at it. Okay? Because once you have this, much easier for you to write because it is more like expanding each bullet. Be meticulous and accurate in describing the materials and method. It is very important. Think about everything that you have done, go back to your notebooks, write everything because the methods and materials section in a manuscript is important for the reader to reproduce what you have done. If you are not, re you know, kind of meticulously written the methods, the way you have done your work and if they are repeating and they did not get your results because you have not detailed everything in your manuscript then they are going to say that whatever you have published are not reproducible. It is going to question your credibility as a scientist. Therefore, it is important that you write methods the way you have carried out your experiments. Therefore, they can reproduce and appreciate that they are reproducible. And that is something easy because you are done, you have completed the experiment, you can easily write. That is something that you can start with. Be clear, concise and objective in describing your results. So, you are talking about results now. Methods you are done with, results. You know, you start about writing about it, you know, exactly say what you have gotten. Do not go beyond, you know, interpretations are not required in results. It is precisely the observation and objectives in the sense that what are the questions that you have asked and how your approach, approach helped to arrive at the answers. That is something that is what constitute the results. Interest your reader in the introduction. Now, you have to introduce your topics introduce your hypothesis, introduce your objectives or questions, therefore you have to create interest in the reader, that is what about the introduction and then highlight the, the novelty of the work, why your work 
is important. What is new there? Because if it is nothing is new, then you need not have done this research at all. So obviously, everyone who is doing research, you are doing something new. But unless you bring out that in the introduction section, I'm not going to appreciate, right? You have to bring in the novelty. Present the principles, relationship, and generalization in concise and convincing tone. That is a discussion. You pretty much relate your observations with the rest of the information that is available in the literature, and then bring out as to how your discovery, how your invention has made a change in terms of the knowledge that is there in that particular domain, but in a convincing tone. You have to be very confident when you say, you cannot be very shaky. If you are shaky, that means you are not confident about your result, and the results are shaky, then anyway you cannot say that your results has to be strong based on certain very good methodology approach that you have taken and very good objectives. So, all these are linked and some of these we are going to look into. Finally, the seventh rule, revise your paper thorough after you know through a thorough critical reading, you read, go through many a times right, and receive feedback and revise again. Show to your friends, your peers and discuss with them and get feedback and then you know revise again, therefore it gets better. So, remember it is not just you write one version is good enough, people write 20 times, 50 times, they revise many a times, therefore the paper gets better. So, these are the seven rules that is what you know said in this paper, most of us follow this rule and really helps. Let us see what really how this particular you know seven rule suggestion help with our earlier discussion as to how to write a manuscript. You remember I said that you start with methods, go to result, then go to introduction and then discussion abstract followed by title. You can see that whole thing happening here. Rule 3, be meticulous and accurate in describing material, you start with that. Be clear, concise, objective describing the result that is results, then you go write introduction and then discussion, then abstract and title. Now you understand how do you really build your research article. Although as a reader you start with title, then abstract, then introduction, then results and discussion methods if need be I go into that. But that is how you know when you write article you basically more often start with methods or with results and then you go to introduction, discussion, abstract and title right. These are the 7 rules, let us see some of them that is create a detailed outline and discuss it with your mentor and peers right. So, you have to put certain outline for the all the work that you have done and, and start thinking about it, how to write the results, how to convert the results into manuscripts. Okay? So, this is again an anecdote, start with a blank piece of paper and write down in any order all important ideas that occur to you concerning the paper. And then you have bullets, discuss, rearrange and then find is there anything missing, add them and then you arrive at a structure, this is how you do it. So, you have you know your results, you have your raw data, you have analyzed it, you have results, you have trends, you have certain ideas, you should know now what should I introduce first, what should I introduce second, which are the point to be highlighted, which are important and so on. So, that is an important element, that is what you call as an outline, right. What do you call as level 1, what do you do? So, you have to bring out the importance of the work that is level 1. What is the topic of my paper? These are the questions, you have to give an answer for that. Why this topic is important? How could I formulate my hypothesis? What are my results? What is my major finding? You know, if you can write it down this that pretty much you know gives you the basic introduction to your paper right. So, you have to these are the five major bullets that you have to look into that and you can see now what are my results, it includes visuals, you may have you know chart, you may have bar diagram, you may have gel pictures, you may have chromatography you know uh, output or it could be table, it could be sequence, it could be you know behavior if there is a video, whatever it is you have to gather everything. So, all in the, the visuals include figures, table, formula, equation, algorithms if you are developing some methods and also list your findings. This, these will constitute the first level of your outline which will eventually expand as you elaborate. And these are very, very important because when you do this, 
you also have to look into as to which journal that I am looking at, which section of the manuscript I am looking at and then accordingly I prepare. So you have to think about all these things even when you, before you start writing your manuscript for any publication. That is the very first level. And then the level 2 is that each of these questions that we have looked at, you have to have more subheadings there, you have to expand it. That is called as level 2 outline. The next stage is to add text and structure. So this is how we are going to give you a kind of a skeleton for your you know paper. Here you will group all your ideas into sections that is introduction, methods, results, discussion, conclusion, whatever it is, right. So what are your you know questions that you are outlined? So for example, what are the studies major finding? What material do you use? What are your objectives, right? These are some of the questions and you know you should have them readied in a few lines or bullets and so on. Now you should know how to group them, right, into which eventually form the various you know sections. For example, these four questions will form introduction. For example, why is your research important? What is known about your topic? What are your hypotheses? What are your objectives? This constitute your introduction. What materials did you use? Who were the subjects of your study? For example, if you are using human samples or some animal models. What are the, what was the design of your research? What procedure did you follow? This constitutes what is called the materials and methods and results. What are your most significant results? What are your supporting results, right? These are major things. So, you, you have certain things that, that are your major results, but to validate your major results that, that your experiment did work well and there are no problems with your reagents, you may do at times some supportive experiment to prove that your things were well, you know, did well and these are called as supporting results. If you look into for example, uh, manuscripts, journals, they will say that these are, you know, some manuscript will have what is called a supplementary, you know, figure, supplementary material. So, these are not data that are presented in the, in the, in the paper itself, but they are supportive evidences to substantiate what you are inferring what you are claiming in your manuscript and these are called as supporting results may not appear in the major in the main text itself, but they are present you know elsewhere. So, you should know what is that major finding, what is the supportive you know, results and then finally, you have to arrive at discussion and conclusion basically what are the studies major finding you sort of summarize again restate to begin with and then you have to bring out the significance implications of the results in relation to the existing literature. Therefore, you can say that how your work contributed to the knowledge, furthering the knowledge and how it may help others. So, these are some of the bullets that, that you have to keep. So, if you can really ask this question and write few lines and then organize like this, then you have the skeleton. So, all you need to do is add you know flesh to each one of this you know bone, you will get the entire body of your manuscript. So, this is how you do. So, you do not start with like what you read, you do not start with title, you do not start with abstract, you must have seen now that how it is done. So, you have to start with few bullets and then put together and form an outline, it is very extremely important. Unless you form an outline, you know you do not know what you are writing. So, you have to be very clear. So, you remember that at times you may introduce results not exactly in the same way as you did experiments. You may have done a given experiment, you would have gotten a result. Now, that is not the result that you are going to introduce first. It may be the third figure or the fourth figure in your manuscript, but you have to provide your results in a comprehensive way therefore, you know people can understand. So, it is not a chronological order of doing things that forms an outline, but it is more at the, at the conceptual level how you are conveying to your reader as to what questions you have asked and how your observations sort of addresses the question what is the significance. So, you have to revisit all your results you know in unbiased way and regroup them and then form an outline and then you discuss you know you it is not that you know. So, when you write a manuscript it is always for the reader therefore, it is better to involve a third person to arrive at the kind of you know uh, the bullets in a particular order. A third person may suggest you that well there is a missing here then you may either you do a small experiment or you may have a results that you may bring in here. So, that really helps you. Once you have this outline, 
then you can really, really work on and, and write a better managed script. So, this is again an important thing that is the next stage is to add text, context and structure to your paper. Here you will group all your ideas into sections as I told you introduction, method, reserves and discussion. So, this is where the outline helps you. Getting feedback during early stage of your draft can save a lot of time. Talking through ideas allows people to conceptualize and organize thoughts to find their direction without wasting time on unnecessary writing because say suppose you have not structured it well and then you have started writing, you would have spent two months in writing, then somebody says well that does not make sense, you rearrange everything. So, all the time that you have spent is wasted, therefore it is better to discuss on the structure first and then write therefore you can save time and you are able to convey you know your research in a better way. Outline is the most effective way of communicating your ideas to uh, and exchanging thoughts, right. The reason is that you wrote something 40 pages, nobody will be sitting with you and reading 40 pages because people do not have time. But if you have an outline, in 10 minutes anybody in that field can sit with you and clearly tell what is the best thing that you have to bring first and what are the supportive results that you are, can bring it later or it is not that important forget about it and so on. So, they give you the important feedback and outlines help because that is you know I am not going to spend too much time because I can quickly understand what it is. Many people come up with three choices and discuss them their mentors and colleagues. You sort of go and discuss you with your supervisor again and again then you, you come up with that. Having a list of journal priorities can help you. Again I told you depending on which journal you write and the way you structure articles you know differ and then journals really help therefore, you first read journal guidelines and which article type you are submitting and then form the structure according to that therefore, you do not waste time in revising your manuscript. So, that is pretty much kind of a summary advice for how to structure your manuscript. I am sure this is going to help you in furthering your skill set as to how you communicate in a research article. So, we will the next week we will see next lecture we will see some guidelines about how to write results section.